One sin in private is more dangerous. One sin in private is more dangerous than what you, you think. The reason is, when a person commits a sin on his own between him and Allah, although it may not be as bad as committing it openly with arrogance, but there is a difference. When you get used to doing something on your own that is bad, perhaps sometimes people might not correct you. When you commit it openly, sometimes a person might correct you. And this is why the hadith speaks of it from another angle where the Prophet ﷺ says, there is hope for people for as long as they, they are not proud of their sin and they don't openly commit it. So that angle, yes, it's in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu But that which you do in private, it, it does not mean it's belittled. It is very dangerous. It is venomous. It is poisonous. It is something that may grow into roots of evil that are like the arteries around your heart. They've blocked it, sealed it. If you've ever seen the diagram of a heart and you see all the, the veins and capillaries and arteries and various other blood vessels around the heart, they, they come so well around the heart that they form like a cage around it. Imagine if that was full of evil. What would happen to us? This is why develop your link with Allah silently. One of the means of purifying your heart. Engage in acts of worship when people are fast asleep. Read your salah at night when nobody's watching besides Allah. Why is this going to purify your heart? Because you are doing it for the sake of Allah. There are a lot of rules and regulations when it comes to Islam because we can only achieve internal and external purity if we are going to understand what is halal and haram. A person who looks very clean outwardly, very clean, smart, speak and span. They may not have washed themselves after relieving themselves, so they are considered impure in the eyes of Allah. A person who looks very smart, speak and span from outside, outwardly, very clean. They may be very abusive with their tongues, so they are not pure. They may be hurtful. They may utter words that are unacceptable. These words can actually sometimes lead them to damaging their reputation with Allah such that they might even come out of the fold of Islam. May Allah not do that to us. Sometimes externally a person is clean and pure, but you know what? Their dealings are not clean and pure. So they are not following Islam correctly. Some people would consume interest giving it another name. We are destroying what Islam has taught. Some people might be consuming alcohol giving it another name. Some people might be consuming or abusing weed, calling it tajweed. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us guidance and acceptance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us stay away from that which is forbidden. Remember, when we speak of tahara, we're also speaking about halal and haram. We're also speaking about leading a clean and pure life. I give you another example. We are not meant to consume meat that is not slaughtered in a specific way. If it is slaughtered in a specific way with the name of Allah, seeking the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you may consume it. Now, sometimes people are not bothered about what they eat and what they drink. And the hadith says, towards the end of time, there will be people who will not be bothered about whether what they are consuming is actually halal or haram. They will just eat it for the sake of eating. You know, wow, it's tasty. Tasty doesn't mean it's halal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us.